In a shocking upset, the federal conservatives picked up a significant win against Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's Liberals in the federal by-election in Toronto St. Paul's riding. The former Liberal stronghold was held for the party these last 10 elections. That wasn't the case last night. Our Parliament Hill reporter Glenn McGregor, he joins us live now uh, from Parliament Hill on more how this could impact both parties moving forward. Good morning, Glenn. Thanks so much for being here. Hi there, Karen. Uh, so, Glenn, you know, the Conservatives have just taken a very coveted Liberal seat. I'm curious, uh, does this put the whole of the GTA uh, in the hands for the Tories? Uh, effectively, it, it puts the entire country in play for the Conservatives. I mean, if there's any place the Liberals would expect to have a guaranteed win, it would be in downtown Toronto. That is the key to their electoral success uh, in every election since 2015. I mean, to win the next election, the Liberals have to win seats sort of in the greater GTA, outstretching out into the 905 in Brampton, in Bramalee, in Etobicoke. The idea that they could lose a seat right in the heart of downtown uh, completely shocked everyone, and I think it even shocked the Conservatives. In fact, the Conservative candidate who won last night, Don Stewart, he addressed his campaign supporters last night at around 1130. At that point, he was trailing by somewhere between 500 and 700 votes, was bouncing around as more poll results came in. And it wasn't quite a concession speech, but it was close to it. Uh, but he did say, let's, you know, the, the, the night is still young, even though it wasn't really that young. Uh, and it, looking ahead to more uh, ballots and more, and more poll results coming in. So uh, real shock here this morning. And of course, the question everybody is asking is, what does this mean for Justin Trudeau's leadership? Uh, a lot of folks saw this as kind of a referendum, this vote on uh, as a referendum on Trudeau's leadership. And until now, we hadn't had Liberal MPs speaking out publicly calling for a change of leadership or review of leadership, I think that might start to change now. I think you might hear some voices of people who are actually in Parliament, Liberals, saying, okay, this, is a, this, this result was a real shock to us. This is voters sending us a message that it's time for a change, either in policy or in leadership, and we're going to have to do this because an election is coming not that far off yet. I mean, at the latest, uh, fall of 2025. And so Liberals have to start getting ready for that. If they're going to make a change in leadership, they have to do it quickly. What do you expect the messaging will be from Liberals today? I imagine this is an embarrassment to have a loss in Fortress Toronto. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge uh, embarrassment and embarrassment for the Prime Minister. And we could possibly hear from him later today. He has an event in British Columbia uh, slated for around uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, don't know if he'll be taking questions from reporters, but he's going to have to say something about this last night because it was such a surprise. The usual excuses will be, well, it doesn't really matter. It's only one seat. It doesn't change anything, the balance of power in the House of Commons. And he'll also say something to the effect of, well, okay, we heard the message. We know people are frustrated with the way things are going. Last week in a television interview uh, on another network, Trudeau said something to the effect that he sees, understands the polls are bad for him. He's trailing the Conservatives nationally by about 20 percentage points. But he says he doesn't think Canadians are in decision mode right now. They're not in the place where they're thinking about choosing their next government. Well, last night was a pretty uh, a strong contradiction of that. Obviously, a lot of people in Toronto St. Paul's were in decision mode and they made a decision to go with somebody else. Now, the ballot in Toronto St. Paul's, it had over 80 candidates on it. It was about a meter long. How did that factor possibly into the outcome? It's quite stunning when you see the pictures. Yeah, that's because there are about 76 people who put their names on the ballot as sort of a protest movement against the, the to protest the fact the Liberals hadn't made good on their chan uh, the, their promises to enact electoral reform, change the way that MPs are elected. So they, they put their names on there as independents. Now, collectively, the independent candidates got about 2.4 percent of the votes that were cast last night in the riding. The margin of victory for Don Stewart over the Liberal Leslie Church only 1.4 percentage points. So theoretically, if all those independent votes or a lot of those independent votes had gone to the Liberals, it might have changed the outcome. It also really delayed things too. The, the, the first results were slow coming in last night. Usually in a by-election, we get the results really, really quickly. The first numbers start coming in from polling stations. But it was just took uh, people who were working uh, as volunteers in the polling uh, stations a long time to tabulate because the, the ballot was actually over a meter long. <laughs> you can imagine what it would be like marking that and then going through and trying to check to see uh, which, which uh, uh, name had, had, been, had the X to it. So it delayed things and it wasn't until sometime after 4 a.m 
a.m., we actually got an official confirmation that the conservative candidate had won. I think probably uh, Election Canada may have to look at how they handle this, this kind of thing uh, in the future. And certainly, you know, our colleagues, our journalist colleagues and people at City TV who are up watching those results into the wee hours of the morning would have appreciated uh, a quicker outcome than they got last night. Yeah, Karen. they were working all through the night. I know I was uh, constantly refreshing once I woke up at about 2 a.m. this morning. Glenn McGregor, Parliament Hill reporter, thank you so much for your insight. I uh, appreciate it so much. Thanks, Karen.